Welcome to Joy Ebeledike's Journal, where we have embarked on a journey of exciting and closer relationship with the Lord. Do join this both to get better clarity on the heart and nature of God. This is Joy Ebeledike. I am glad to welcome you to my journal today. In this episode, we shall conclude our theme on overcoming challenges and crises with the topic, When the Waves Come. Recall that in the last two episodes, we concluded that if we want to be adequately prepared for the waves and storms of life, we must develop an intimate and close relationship with our Father. We must stay in close fellowship and to work with Him on a daily basis. And this, even when on the surface, everything seems to be going well. Today, we shall consider how to respond to the challenges and storms of life when they come. As we conclude this theme on facing challenges, let's go back to our text in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. This scripture states, Anyone who listens to my teaching and obeys me is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. But anyone who hears my teaching and ignores it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will fall with a mighty crash. Did you get that? Jesus says we are foolish when we ignore his word. He also says that a person who ignores the word of God is not only foolish, but will fall when the rains and the floods come. He will fall because his mind is not renewed. And because his mind is not renewed, he has no roots. And he lacks the necessary weapons to resist the devil and to conquer hardship. So the first thing to do when a storm breaks in our lives is to examine ourselves to determine where we stand, among the wise or the foolish. If you have been foolish, you need to change course. The good news is that we are serving a loving, compassionate God who is always willing to give us a second chance. So if you've been staying at a distance from God and his word, or you're one of those who visit with God only on Sundays or once in a while, then you've been building on sand. And you need to start a project of reconstruction of your house. You will need to start studying the word of God worshiping the Lord, practicing intimacy with him, and confessing his word over your life and your circumstances. One can't pretend that it will be easy to change your lifestyle at a time of crisis. But the Lord sees the hearts, and his grace is always available to anyone who sincerely desires his help. How do we face trials? God knew that his children will face trials and challenges. So he provides in Isaiah chapter 43, 1 to 3, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Praise the Lord. When a crisis comes your way, you must not make the mistake of seeking help elsewhere. You must not go back to Egypt or stay away from the presence of God. In fact, it's a sign of immaturity. To stay away from the presence of God when problems arise. A crisis actually grants you an opportunity to test your faith in God. Let's consider the story of Abraham. Why do you think Abraham was ready to obey God even if it meant sacrifices Isaac? Romans chapter 4 verse 3 says, Abraham believed God. Now what did Abraham believe? Hebrews chapter 11, 17 to 19 sheds light on Abraham's belief. 
This scripture says it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, though God had promised him Isaac is a son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. Simply put, Abraham had so much faith in God that he believed that since God had promised him that he will be a great nation through Isaac, then even if he killed Isaac, God will bring Isaac back to life in order to fulfill his promise. Abraham believed he would have uncountable descendants because God said so. Abraham believed God in the midst of the worst trial that anyone could face. He believed God in spite of the circumstance. He believed that even if he killed Isaac, God would bring Isaac back to life in order to fulfill his promise. Brethren, we need to have Abraham's kind of faith. We need to believe that God will do whatever it takes to keep his promise to God or to us. During your time of trial, You need to find the word of God that is applicable to the situation. Read it over and over and continue speaking that word to the situation. You should never underestimate the power of the tongue. James 1.5 says the tongue is a great member and boasts great things. Proverbs 18.21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you need to speak. The word of God says you are to resist the devil in times of crisis. James chapter 4, 7 to 8 states, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. To resist the devil means to refuse to give in to the devil and the circumstance. Don't expect the devil to turn and run immediately you start resisting him. The devil will resist the word of God by raising false arguments in your heart. He will try to make you focus on the circumstances rather than on the word of God. Therefore, you must resist him by standing your ground. Many Christians lose it here by giving up after some time. I have been there many times too. (laughs) But the word of God says we should resist the devil. You must stand your ground. The devil is the liar, so he is the one who should give up, not you. You will see in Genesis chapter 3, 2 to 3, that Eve actually quoted the word of God to the serpent. But when the serpent misquoted the word of God to her, she did not resist. She gave up. She believed his lie. The devil knows the word of God, and he will always look for a way to confuse us. And so this is why we need to study, to meditate, and to memorize the word of God so that the devil cannot confuse us. Brethren, no matter how long the trial or the warfare between you and the devil lasts, you need to keep resisting. Because according to Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. The word of God is the truth. The devil is the liar. Even when you feel you are gaining ground or that you have done all you are expected to do, you must remain resolute. You must keep standing. This means you must continue applying all the spiritual principles we have been discussing. You must not give the devil a chance. 1 Peter 5, 8-9 says, Be careful. Watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victim to devour. Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. And Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. You must not waver from the truth of the word of God. No matter what the circumstances say, you must insist that God has the last say. 
Remember Hebrews 11, 17. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. So no matter how bad the circumstances look, no matter how dark the devil has painted the picture, God is able to bring life back into the situation. This is the cross of the matter, the ability to stand and to keep standing. How can a child of God acquire this ability to stand? Brethren, this is not magic. Neither is this fast food. The only way is by dwelling in the presence of God. Again, by studying his word. By staying intimate with him before and when the storm breaks. The ability to stand requires maturity and maturity comes with commitments. And when the problem is taking too long to go away, what do we do? Is it possible to still praise God, to love him, to trust him, to keep serving him? The answer is yes. When you have done all and you keep standing, something will happen. The Prince of Peace will give you the peace of the mind that the world cannot understand in the midst of the storm. He will give you a calmness that defies reasoning because of the faith you have placed in him. In conclusion, before or when the waves come, our Lord and King desires us to dwell in his presence. He created us for his pleasure, to worship him and fellowship with him. No trial or temptation should ever make us lose sight of this fact. In fact, it says to us in 1 Corinthians 10, 14, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. And so, Father, we bless you for the peace of mind that the world cannot understand in the midst of the storm. Thank you, Father, for always granting us a way of escape and for providing rivers in our deserts in Jesus' name. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you have not to listen to more of Joy Abel Decay's conversations. Never forget, you are the object of God's love and affection.